Hello again. So this video is to show you how to create a task using or an assignment using Sight Reading Factory. Okay, so this is one of the software pieces that we have access to and one of the most useful um, to me. So, so to create a task, first we're going to go to the class that we want to create it in. I'm going to create in the create box right here, task in the drop down menu, click create. Okay, so we're going to say site reading one. Okay, so site reading one. There we go. And when it says task type, we're going to choose music first software because Site Reading Factory is music first software. And we're going to click Site Reading Factory. If you want to include a description, you can here. Um, but you'll see in a second that it really doesn't matter um, because they'll have all the information they need from Site Reading Factory. Click the due date, which is this Friday. Make sure to get that in. Um, standards. Um, one nice thing about standards, the standards is you can just type in um, some of the words that you're looking for. So if you're looking for a site reading standard, so, so 7.im.p2.c. Um, so let's say again, this is an eighth grade assignment. So there you go, and you have your standard attached. And grades are not um, really necessary. I, again, I just like to type in the grade just so the student can see how many points it's going to be when it goes into PowerSchool. But this grade book will ultimately not be our grade book and does not connect to PowerSchool. So those will all be entered separately. And create task. Now, this next step is, um, is an important step. And ultimately, if you don't finish this next step, your assignment's not going to be there. So you do have to click Open in Sight Reading Factory. And this is where you actually create your task. So if you have specific instructions you want to list, you can list them there. Um, or what things you want to explain for them or just try to walk them through it. Now, I do have a video just to plug my, um, my other videos. I do have a video um, showing how to complete student site readings on Music First. Um, you are more than welcome to copy that link um, to my, my YouTube channel to show them that. Um, it's out there for them. Um, so I like to allow max attempts or to allow unlimited attempts because the thing is they, they're practicing sight reading. So um, if they're practicing over and over again, trying to get that perfect take, oh no, they just practice sight reading for like 30 minutes trying to get a good take. So some of them are going to be able to do it first shot just fine, um, depending on the difficulty. And some of them are going to do a whole bunch of takes and some of them will probably do just fine the first time, but then we'll do a whole bunch of takes because they want to get a better one. And again, they're, they're practicing. So that's great. Um, so let students choose the instrument. Um, you know, let's they choose their own instrument. Um, now you choose. I normally choose the level. So you can do um, set custom levels and get those in here. Um, if there's an interest in that, I can create a video on how to do that later. But let's say this is eighth grade, so at least three. Okay, key signature. Let's do A flat major. There we go. And time signature. This is eighth grade, so they should be delving into some six eight. So there we go. Um, now I'll do eight measures and like eight measures. Um, I believe mid state is 20 seconds. So I normally do that for 20 seconds. And I normally do it pretty slow to start, uh, especially when introducing new time signatures or, or keys. Um, now this is up to you, however you do it. Uh, I like to include the metronome because middle schoolers need as much practice with a metronome as possible. So I like to include the metronome when we do ours, uh, but I do not typically use the subdivision of the beat um, just because that confuses some of the students. So yes, metronome, no subdivision for me, but of course, however you practice in class is what they will, they will use. So now you have a couple options down here as well. So you have the option for disappearing measures, which is just after that measure is finished when they should have been done and they get counted off at the metronome, then it um, it goes away. Um, the note cursor is the little cursor like uh, it used to be on um, smart music. They used to have the little cursor that would go with them um, as they played. So that's what that is, just so they can know where they are. It's a very jerky, though, cursor. I typically leave it off just because it, it confuses the students. Measure numbers. Um, not really necessary for sight readings individually. I use measure numbers when we're doing full class sight readings in class um, with the big score on the board, just so I can say, okay, now let's talk about measure five 
because that was trash and we need to go back and talk about it. So, um, so I do use those for class, but not really for these. Now, if you, the, any of these are things that you use, scale degrees, pitch names, and you want to include on there, go for it. Um, and then minor scales, if applicable, um, which I don't mess with those right now. So, and then attach assignment to task. Okay. And there you go. So that should be completely done. Um, and if you want to see what it looks like on the student side, again, you can check out my other YouTube videos that show the student side. So I have a playlist of music first videos for for students, and those will show you what it looks like on the student side. You can get a picture for that as well. So that is that. But I will show you one other thing that's important, which is to make it a favorite. And I will show you that in the next video, video six in the series um, of why that's important and how that's going to allow you to assign this so much easier to all your other classes.